What is going on everyone? It's your guy Cole Jackson back here on Road Graders coming to you on a different Monday than the last two weeks. The last two weeks we've had a lot of positive things to discuss and today we're doing what all Ravens fans are doing and we're playing the blame game. This happens after every loss and so I had a tweet that went out last night. Blame injuries and refs all you want. The offense was terribly bad for the majority of the day, and that's why they lost. Two chances to get yards and close out the game, and you basically force 60-plus yard field goal looks just brutal. So some people pushed back, didn't really agree, that's fine. So I decided I'd do what I always do. I'm going to go to the film, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to play the blame game, and I'm going to show you the reason the Ravens lost this game. And so we're going to start looking at the two drives after the Ravens' safety. So the, fir the first drive here started at 2.03 um, in the fourth quarter. This was the, um, the fair catch. Um, that's the one where there was the, the note that Zay was told to fair catch and then they changed the alignment and he didn't get the, the message to not fair catch because that would have burned down some time and they would have... Uh, but if he would have ran with the ball, we wouldn't have had the two-minute warning. So I want to start looking at this drive. So the Ravens get the ball before the two-minute warning, which obviously stops the clock. And I want to take a look at the plays that happened and what I think happened. Um, and then we're going to look at the play with the or the drive with the missed field goal. Because I think there was so many factors that led to this. It was just, it was poor play calling. It was poor um, offensive line play. It was poor uh, decision making by the QB. Um, it's all of those things and I think we're trying to just pick one thing but it was just such ineptitude by the offense so let's start first of all before we get into it you can see the first second and third down plays all three runs I get it they're trying to run out the clock um, so you know they're gonna run the ball but just really didn't like the play calls we'll start here so this is the first down run um, it went for one yard what I didn't like is they kind of come out lined up in heavy um, and they're doing the unbalanced line again, and they've done this a few times. Uh, it actually worked last week, but they did it about three times in this game, and it's just not working. They're getting attacked um, on the on the backside where you don't have your balance line. So you're going to see Ricard go in motion as he does. Um, actually, a nice little hole forms, and so you're going to get Ricard coming down, and he's going to be the kickout man, and it's going to create a little bit of a wall here. You can see the double being worked here. Simpson getting his man. Andrews has a seal. We have a lane, but one guy gets beat, and that's what closes this down. Now, that safety was coming up anyway, so I'm not sure how much it matters, but if he can run freely, maybe we're getting more than one yard. So let's just go through here. So you see Moses just get his face crossed. So this is where the, this is where the rep was lost. You need him to reach that inside shoulder, and... He just can't do it. You even got a little bit of a bump there um, from Simpson, and he just needs to get this right foot out and attack that inside shoulder. Moses doesn't even get his head across, um, unfortunately. So that's obviously slows him up. Again, he's probably not getting more than a few yards here, but just kind of leads to the pattern of the offensive line. So we get into second down here, and this is where you know they come out again in heavy. They got Daniel Falele in here. Extra O lineman, fullback, tight end. So they're out here in heavy again, running into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Basically a 10 man box because you line up like this. So I'm not saying they shouldn't necessarily be running the ball, but completely tipping their hand to a run and letting the defense line up like this. They have everything inside the tackles mug. That that's even the 2019 O line is going to struggle with this. Um, so let's play it. Crazy enough, they actually almost had a gap here. Um, so this is going to be just, I would call this ISO lead. And so they could have a five eye technique, or a, sorry, a four eye technique here and a two technique. And so they want to get Simpson going here, McCary here. And so Mustafa has to reach block a two technique. That's a tough block for a center. Um, this is where a guy like Linderbaum with his quickness would be able to make a better play on this. But 90 made the play on the ball on the first one, and you can see him just getting his hat out. And so as he Mustafer tries to reach here, they actually seal this up real nice. Likely he's got 
a pretty good seal block here. Ricard's leading, that's the ISO lead, and McCary comes off his block really well. Again, if if Mustafer can seal here, they almost have a gap. Like John Simpson did a really good job working. He can see him up there in the armpit. Um, but unfortunately, Mustafer forces Gordon outside, and that goes into three guys. So if Mustafer is able, again, it's one guy kind of missing a block, a tough block, don't get me wrong, but, um, you know, that kind of situation nonetheless. And now the Colts are lined up. It's third and nine. They're going to just run this little end around with Zay. This is where El Aguilar gets a block in the back. So you basically came out, you went run, 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 um, and it just didn't pay off. All they did was get the clock down to 148 when the punt went out. Um, you know, the Colts used all their timeouts. They go down the field, they get a field goal. The Ravens get the ball back. 57 seconds. Uh, they had two timeouts, I think, at the time. Yeah, two timeouts. So you got two timeouts, 59 seconds. You got time. You got time to get down there and get into field goal range for Justin Tucker. And so I didn't cut up all these plays. We're actually going to start with the first down run by Melvin Gordon. So before this, they, they did get another first. They had uh, they missed the incomplete deep left of Bateman. Zay Flowers had an eight-yard catch, and then Nelson Aguilar had a four-yard catch. That leads to first and 10 with 29 seconds left. Ravens have about 20 yards to go here. They start off with a nice little Melvin Gordon, um, just a little bit of a Texas route there. Hits him on the crosser, goes for a first down, really like that. Sets up first and 10 on the Baltimore 49. We need about 10, 15 yards. Um, they did use their second timeout, so you have one timeout uh, with 30 seconds left. And so that leads to this play. Um, so let's watch. We're going to watch the sack, and then I'm going to show you where I think the real issue with this play was. So they're going to line up. Colts line up not really looking like a ton of pressure. They basically have a three down line against a five man protection and Gordon hanging in, but then when the snap comes, they bring six. So they bring two linebackers and, uh, sorry, the DB that was on Andrews here. So as this gets, um, or attempts to get picked up, Zeitler's a little bit at fault here. You see him looking right, coming back in, and as EGA speed attacks, he doesn't seem to hit him, or it doesn't seem to see him, and they're running across with, the linebacker back here. So they're essentially attacking this A gap with two players that Gordon has to pick up one. And I could see Gordon kind of stepping in, expecting him, thinking Zeitler's picking him up. But Gordon has to adjust. And as he does, he just has no leverage because of the position he was set up with. That's the initial pressure. Lamar tries to get out of it and then leads to this. So essentially, and I mean, you can see Moses on the on the far side against Quiddy Pay. Not necessarily a bad rep. He's just trying to push him out the back of the pocket, but because he was forced out, he basically ran him around the uh, around the back of the pocket, and Quiddy was able to just pursue him. And then Lamar tries to get it out. So just can't take a sack there. So originally, everybody's thinking get the ball out, right? And so the rule of thumb is throw into the pressure. So. This, this is your blitz man, so he's going to come up and blitz. And so Andrews should be a pretty safe route here. But he's not even remotely looking back. And so you can see, this is how quick the pressure got here. We basically have, they're about 15 yards downfield. Nobody's looking back at this point. There is no check down. There's no spot to throw the ball so obviously this is throw the ball for an incompletion throw it at the back of Andrew's legs but I still think you can see how quickly this pressure comes and then Lamar is trying to scramble so I mean this is where I think personally when Andrews feels this guy come he needs to look back because he's the outlet guy right here so as soon as he sees him go there's a safety here. He knows this is a blitz. So that would be, again, you're throwing into the pressure. So this guy leaves. If he's looking back or expecting this, Lamar can just throw a quick pass. But instead, his head's down the entire way. The only person that starts to work back is the, is the slot here. So, you know, Lamar can't take that sack. I'm not trying to say that it's not Lamar's fault. I'm not trying to deflect blame. 
but this was a bad root concept um, with basically looking like four verts before the pressure came. The only person that hooks is that is that slot. I think he's going to probably run a deep post, but seam here, nine route here, there's just not really much he can do. But again, can't take a sack there, not saying that's okay. Um, so then that sets up second and 20 on the Baltimore 39. Um, you're going to see this is going to be the attempt to Duvernay here in the slot. And DB just, this ball needed to probably come out a little bit. It was actually there. Um, there's not enough depth here. You got this whole open area. I think if the ball comes out right as Duvernay's breaking and lands right around this area, you're floating it over that over this player, but I think Lamar could do that. We've seen him do it before. It just comes out late, and it gave time for the DB to catch up and for that safety to step up. So, I mean, once the ball comes out, if it comes out a little bit quicker, there's distance here. He's probably getting contested by this man, but maybe it's going more over there. <coughs> and then lastly, the one that did get us into at least a field goal attempt. Really nice throw. Just beautiful. Watch Aguilar get in behind the wall of defenders and just kind of sit. See him? He just sits once he crosses face here. Crosses this DB and just sits in the zone. Giving Lamar a window and moving upfield. So it wasn't enough, but I just kind of wanted to take a look at everything. So you, you see a little bit of everything. You see a bad decision. You see some bad play calling. I didn't like how the Ravens came out in heavy on the first drive that we looked at and basically just tried to run the ball. Um, I thought they could have been a little bit more creative than that. Um, again, I understand you want to uh, run the ball. I get it. But you could come out in an 11, 11 personnel spread it, try and empty that box. You could even use screens. They've actually been quite successful on that um, to push the ball out because you're not running the ball well. The indie D-line is quite good. And he basically just ran into them for three plays. It just didn't work. Um, so, you know, some complaints here about Todd Munkin, some complaints here about the offensive line. They need to win their assignments. And to defend Todd Munkin, to basically antithesis what I just said, some of those plays were there. And you saw on the first play, Moses doesn't execute. And on the second play, Mustafer doesn't execute. So if you guys are thinking, you know what, they came out heavy to run it down their throat, and there were some holes. You guys are right. You're absolutely right. Guys have to do their job. So that's what I mean by when we play the blame game and we point fingers, it's just complex, right? It's a lot of guys doing a lot of things out there. A lot of things happen. That's all I have for you guys today. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Peace out.